And he did what he had to do. Are you interested in seeing Crawford? I mean, Crawford, Terrence Crawford jump up to fight uh, uh, Canelo, or do you think that that weight jump jump the three? No, weight no. I think I think Crawford still Crawford could be the best in the world um, at those divisions, but I think he should stay away from Canelo right now. Let let Canelo do his thing, but. For sure, for sure, I know Crawford's gonna be the face of boxing after Canelo does his thing. Andy Ruiz tells Terrence Crawford to leave it alone and you should stay away from Canelo, Canelo, Canelo. That's what I want to talk about in this video. Let's get unpacked. We unpack. We unpack, we unpack, coming to you live, boxing ego unpack, yeah, we unpack, we unpack, we unpack, coming to you live. Andy Ruiz basically warns Terrence Crawford, he says Crawford, he could be the man, he could be the face of boxing after Canelo Alvarez, but he might want to leave that win alone and stay away from Canelo Alvarez. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Subscribe to the channel. It's free. Now, Andy Ruiz, there was a media scrum, and you guys heard the clip at the beginning, the snippet. Andy Ruiz said what he said. My thoughts. Listen. I'm a very consistent, I think I'm the most consistent in boxing, probably in boxing history in terms of covering boxing in the digital space because I keep it a thou wow. And it's funny that the great ego Stradamus strikes again. I say these things and I have a home recording studio. So you get this information if you subscribe to my channel almost instantaneously. It doesn't take me much time. I'll be doing my videos in one take. So all I have to do is record, title, and publish on YouTube, right? And you guys get the information real quick. And it's just funny because I say these things and people say, oh, you're hating or disagree. I disagree with what you got to say and all these types of things. And sooner than later, you always hear it's like almost like clockwork after I say these things, people from within the boxing realm, actual pro boxers, trainers, they start parroting and mimicking and, you know, in their own words, saying the same thing that I've already told you from day one. And that's exactly what's happening here. The more people that keep getting asked about this question, they keep saying that this is a fight that Crawford should probably leave alone i mean there's so many different people malik scott just did an interview and he says yeah people he said boxers are sensitive and you know david benavidez i would probably favor him to beat canelo and he said i would probably favor canelo to beat terrence crawford and he said nowadays boxers are so sensitive that we got to elevate the game it's a fight and i love that malik scott said this and if you guys see the interview on social media, then you should definitely tap into it. But I love that he said that because that's what I experience all the time. You know, boxers, they get mad. And they don't want criticism. It's like you take punches in the face for a living, but you can't take constructive criticism. Now, me, I can only speak for me. I don't know what other people are saying, doing, and talking about. But as far as me, I'm always respectful. I always keep it cool. I don't talk about, I'm not talking about these fighters' families and their girlfriends, their wives, their boyfriend, whatever. You know, I keep it boxing. We talk about boxing. But Malik Scott is absolutely right. There's a lot of people. And I never thought that I would have so much influence in the game. I mean, I knew I was a star, but I didn't think I would have so much influence where little old me, my opinion seems to bother people so much, you know, but it is what it is. It comes with the territories and that's what happens when you put your opinion out online for everybody you got to take the good with the bad so regarding canelo and crawford i really truly don't see what this allure is 
Like you got media asking this question all the time. You got fans keep talking about it. Listen, Crawford is a talent. He beat Errol Spence. Thought he would lose that fight. He proved me wrong there. But what are we talking about? We're literally talking about different divisions and people are acting like this is a goddamn video game where you could just move up and wait. You don't have to like acclimate and pump up. Crawford, again, he has skills there, but this is what I'm saying. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. There's a lot of guys in boxing that have skills, but if you put them out of their depth, if you put them out of their element, then it's going to spell trouble. You know, it's going to spell trouble. And that has nothing to do with like insulting the fighter. It has something to do with the reality of moving up in weight. You know, you're moving up in weight. That takes time, typically. So, Bo Mack, I seen Crawford's trainer. He just did an interview and he said that, oh, this, this fight can happen in 2024. I really just don't get it. I, I don't understand it. Like I said, if you take a fighter as skilled as Crawford, but you put him out of his depth in terms of his weight class, then who knows how he'll look. We just really watched that with Jermail Charlo. And I'm not saying he's the same exact fighter or they fight the same stylistically, but Einstein has a great quote and he says, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid, right? So again, that's because you're taking the fish out of their natural habitat and you're taking the fish out of their normal element, it's not going to work. And that's what I think with the the fight. I, I know Canelo has, you know, he's done some questionable things in boxing. I criticize Canelo just the same. I don't understand why people are so fixated on this fight. Other than the, the only thing I can understand is we live in this modern age of short attention spans and TikTok and just last weekend, we had KSI fighting the son of a heavyweight, or not the son, the brother of a heavyweight champion, Tommy Fury, and Jake Paul just announced he's coming back. So I understand it's slightly different times in boxing, but these novelty fights, if you really look at it, they're never, mark my words, and if I'm lying, just <laughs> listen, if I'm not lying, Put not lying in the comment section. If you think what I'm about to say in this statement is a lie after I say it, then you can put liar. So put not lying in the comment section or put liar. Here's the statement. These novelty fights, they're in no way, shape or form better than the best boxing fights. What do I mean? So if you look at Logan Paul versus KSI. If you look at Jake Paul, Nate Diaz, if you look at KSI versus Tommy Fury, if you look at Floyd Mayweather versus McGregor, and then you pit those novel, those what I'm calling novelty fights, and you pit those against Hagler Hearns or Errol Spence and Sean Porter or Kayla Plant and David Benavidez, these novelty fights, and I'm even going to throw in Canelo versus Jermail Charlo because it was the same thing. It was novelty. You had the novelty of two big names. There were two undisputed fighters, but there are two undisputed fighters in two totally different weight classes that were separated by 14 pounds. And that was the Canelo fight was terrible with Jermail Charlo. It was it was not a fun watch. There was no thrills and spills. It was not scintillating. It was not an adrenaline fueled fight, but that's what you can typically get. You're going to get a lesser fight. So that's what, again, that's why I don't understand this hyperbole and this fixation on these novelty fights. They never, ever turn out to be better than the best boxing fights, where it's two actual lifelong boxers, two highly um, coveted and decorated fighters. And then Crawford, he, I know he he says he wants to fight, but Canelo's not going to let him be the A-side. That's already a given. So the way Crawford has, has 
proven to be kind of difficult to deal with in terms of negotiating. I, I just feel like it'll be more trouble than it's worth as well because Crawford might want – if he's moving up – listen, if, if he was the beast – if he was the clear B-side when he was fighting Errol Spence and he wanted some extras like coin flips and extra money and now – they're saying if the fight doesn't happen at 47 in the rematch with Errol Spence, then he wants more money and these types of things. So what's it going to cost for Crawford, who's undisputed, 2X, something no male boxer has done, only Clarissa Shields in women's boxing. What's it going to cost for Crawford to move up three weight classes, three to fight Canelo Alvarez. You know, he's going to want probably crazy money. You know, it's probably going to be a absolutely diabolical negotiation because that's a huge risk in general. So Crawford is going to want to be, and I'm, I can't speak for Crawford, but in my opinion, Crawford would want to be well compensated for taking such a huge risk. So all in all, I just think the fight is, I guess it's something to talk about. I, I don't know. I don't live the same. I don't live in the goofy world as some boxing fans live in. I live a real life. Like I really be outside and, you know, get fresh air and things like that. So I can't really speak for everybody, but it just sounds like madness that boxing is trying to entertain this. So I agree with Andy Ruiz. He's talking about stay away from Canelo it's not that Crawford can't fight. If they were naturally the same size, then that'd be one conversation, but they're not. That's like saying Amir Khan would be damn near unbeatable if he had a granite chin, but he doesn't. That's part of the package. Part of the package that you get when you deal with an Amir Khan is his chin is very shaky, and some would say it's a glass chin. So you got to take the good with the bad, and you have to take things and they come as they may Crawford is a welterweight he's never fought at 54 he's never signified and you know planted his seed at 160 why do I want to see him fight Canelo Alvarez at 68 it sounds goofy I don't care how much he wants it or 3x undisputed or he's not motivated to rematch Errol there's other great fights that are closer to where he's at boots same division fight Jerron Ennis Tim Zhu just looked good I pause I thought Tim Zhu looked good versus a very game live Brian Mendoza fight Tim Zhu go to Australia fight Tim Zhu at 54 you know even if you want the Canelo fight you didn't Crawford didn't really have the looks we'll say when he was with top rank the big name high profile fights he just got one with Errol Spence cool build on that and keep building you know to kind of catch up to where you should have been if you were if you didn't re-sign with top rank and then fight a Jerron Ennis which is a fight I would love to see fight a Tim Zhu something like that and then I guess maybe in the future if Canelo's still unbeaten at 168 or whatever the case is maybe we get it but I, I'm not a big fan of the jumping up weight classes it is I, I just feel these novel. like I said earlier I really truly feel like these novelty fights never play out like Kell Brook moving up all this weight to fight a middleweight Golovkin hell no guys hey Max says box of guys this, this drama big drama it never turns out and plays out it, it was like an okay fight that lasted four or five rounds Kell Brook whole career was ruined from it you know what I mean so I, I, I'm call me an old soul, but that's just how I feel. And I really feel it. So I understand the people who are saying Canelo's too big because he is, you know, if we're really being honest, he is too big because here's the thing. And I put stuff so beautifully, so eloquent that you can't really deny the stuff that I'm saying. I will leave you with this. We unpacked. Terrence Crawford, nobody is asking him to fight David Morrell Jr. Fight David Morrell Jr. And I'm going to explain to people like, oh, but why? You just want to see Crawford lose. That's the point. If you're not willing to put Terrence Crawford in there 
with a David Morrell Jr. as super middleweight, then why would you be willing to see Crawford move up three divisions to fight Canelo Alvarez? And only can so you don't have to do no work in the division. You could just move up 21 pounds, fight an A-side, and get a crack at four belts because he's undisputed, and he just beat Jamel Charlo. How does how does this supposed to work? Like, what part of the game of boxing is this where you could just cut the line? Like, people are mandatories and go through ranking systems, and people are really trying to promote this where you don't even have to pay your your wages and union dues and and pay your way in the division and you can just automatically get it and i guess the only exception is maybe if you're a floyd mayweather you know and what i mean is you're just such a big star that it's like floyd truly could do whatever he wanted because he was he's bringing in a billion dollars for boxing right he was just a cash cow. Crawford is not, he's a great fighter, but he's not that in terms of A-side. Canelo clearly be the A-side. So I, I would be glad when this conversation, when something comes up and even Canelo himself, hey, pay they, he said he don't feel he would get credit for it. So hopefully this dies down, but at the, at the current point, it doesn't look like it will. A lot of media is still asking the questions when they see the fighters and it still seems to be a hot topic. So we're going to keep working on it. But Canelo, this is who he should really be fighting, especially if he beats Demetrius Andre or if Andre wins. That's who Canelo should be fighting. And I gave you some examples of people that Crawford would be, they'd be great matches, great matches for him. I get it. Okay, you don't want to watch the Errol Spence rematch. Cool. Jerron Boots Ennis is not Errol Spence. He's his own fighter. Let that be a thing. Let Tim Zoo in Australia be a thing. These are all great fights, people. We unpack. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation Fives by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work.